kind of bored. We could play with these dolls. Yeah. Hey Barbie, that was an amazing date. You want to go back to my place? Check out the hot tub? Uh, yeah. That sounds good. Oh, sweet. Let's go. I guess Barbie's already in her swimsuit, so I don't really have to do anything. Your doll have a swimsuit? Like, I guess. Oh, absolutely not. No, uh-uh. You, you look awful. What Are you kidding mean? me? Do you have any idea how long it takes me to get ready, especially for a date and to get into a hot tub? You look like a hot dog that was rolled down the floor of a barber shop. You what? look disgusting. No, absolutely not. You can't just roll out of bed, barely shower, and put on dollar store deodorant and expect to get with this. No. You got a manscaped, just like in real life. By the way, where did you even buy a doll that has pubes like that? It was on clearance. I can see why. Guys, Manscaped's Perfect Package 4.0 has everything you need to make you look your best. The Lawnmower 4.0 and Weed Whacker 2.0 make taking care of unwanted hair easier than ever. Get 20% off with free shipping off your order now at manscaped.com forward slash angry Joe show plus two free gifts. Hey guys, so we just got back from Oppenheimer, uh, you know, double feature this week with uh, Barbie and now Oppenheimer. And uh, let's dive right into Oppenheimer. Um, by the way, I hope you enjoyed that, that Manscaped ad for Barbie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was great. It, A lot of good comments. It was. I'm going to put it in front of this mm -hmm. one as well. Uh, but guys, so, wow, this film, three hours long, uh, Christopher Nolan uh, of Batman fame. Uh, and I, I was waiting for this. The trailers looked excellent. This is, uh, you know, a history uh, drama, and it just, you know, seemed like an event film. And um, I'm curious to see how well it does in theaters, uh, th being three hours long, being historical. Um, you know, it's not an action movie, yeah, a superhero movie. Uh, that's what movie. I was afraid of. It's not like general audience right. kind of film. But it's good storytelling. I'll tell you right off the bat that this is an important film. Um, I didn't know a whole <coughs> lot about the Manhattan Project other than what I learned in school and then, you you know, kind of incorrect notions that have popped up over time that I thought, you know, when I was younger, I thought Albert Einstein was more involved, but that's not necessarily the case, you know, just because you build a formula doesn't necessarily mean you build a bomb. Um, he is in the film you know, in an outside kind of way and in a, in a cool kind of way. Uh, but this is definitely a biopic about the man himself, Oppenheimer, who I really knew nothing about. I didn't know that one man kind of brought everybody together, got all the scientists in a race. I knew there was a race against the Nazis and, and for the most part, uh, the communists but uh, in Soviet Russia. But Wow. Uh, to, to get it all, um, you know, on screen in this way and, and, and fully fleshed out, it makes me w very curious in, in the history. This is a screenplay. So it's directed by Christopher Nolan, a screenplay by Christopher Nolan. This is definitely a pet project of his and, and a passion of his. It's based on American Prometheus by Kai Bird and Martin J. Sherwin, so a book. So I'm assuming that a lot of this is uh, based on historical fact and, and, got, and got it right. And, you know, obviously it's a film, so there's going to be some dramatic liberties taken uh, with how yeah. certain characters give each other motivations and things like that. But, um, man, everybody fully committed to the film. Everybody's performances was flawless. I couldn't even recognize Robert Downey Jr., you know, they kept saying he was in this film, and I was like, no, I haven't seen him in the trailers. I did see him in the trailers. <laughs> He's unrecognizable as a, as a senator. Uh, Strauss, Louis Strauss, um, senior member of uh, the United States Atomic Energy Commission. And, 
Yeah, uh, Casey Affleck. Uh, you know, of course, there's a lot of people. Cillian Murphy, who you know, uh, Nolan loves to work with. He's in every film. People He's great. Accuse- I love him, mm-hmm. yeah. especially in Peaky Blinders. Yeah, and people accuse what is it, Zack Snyder of other people, and and James Gunn of using the same people. My fucking, <laughs> my fucking uh, Christopher Nolan's years using, but he d- made the right choice because this motherfucker can act, and he really does. Uh, carry the film and uh, yeah just it's profound it's important it uh, is engrossing entertaining um, well shot well acted even d- directorial uh, touches and, and, and visual flourishes of the world of, of a theory and and uh, atomic atoms and and explosions and fire the kind of beauty and 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 uh, terrifying nature of destruction on this level um and a lot of it is covered very well and uh and now i know the names associated with these people strauss oppenheimer groves the the military guy putting it all together and uh I very, very much enjoyed it. Did I feel the length? I definitely felt the length. You know, there's a part in the film where it's like, okay, I could see where this would end right here. No, the story is not over. I mean, this is the from the culmination of creating the Manhattan. Actually, the hi- you know, a little bit of the prehistory of Oppenheimer before he was involved in the Manhattan Project, and then that whole project, the race, and then the subplots of yeah, the, the, uh, the the are you a spy for the Soviets? Who is a part of the Communist Party? That McCarthyism a little bit uh, permeating throughout that. And then after winning the race, how the scientists were treated, how they felt about themselves, how they dealt with such destructive power now in the hands of cutthroat people um, and, 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 and countries. And then it goes... After all that race, it goes at length and, you know, a little bit of the fallout and accusations and political maneuverings and machinations. Just, wow, a complete story told very well, and I urge you to go out and see this film. But be ready, you know, uh, go to the bathroom before, try not to have... It's three hours long, yeah. You know, (laughs) three, four beers, uh, or else you'll have to get up uh, in the middle of it. So... Uh, that's my opinion on it. Let's grab. Uh, what do you? What did you guys think? I fucking love this film. This was amazing. Everyone did a great job with acting. I love the visual cues in between. Whenever he's just like theorizing and just doing everything, you get all these like, like you said, the explosions. Elements. And whenever he starts feeling guilty, you get these great shots. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that like kind of mirror, uh, like the, the, the whole the world is shaking. And stuff like that. Like behind I came boom, out there, I was boom, like, boom, boom, boom. I can't hear shit. Yeah. It was fucking loud. Yeah, they made this movie loud. I don't know if that was just art theater or is that know. sound that's design? Right? That's what he does. He, exactly. Like he almost fucks up his own movie sometimes. Like where you, okay, I thought thing. so. Yeah. I thought so. But yeah, I just watched that in IMAX. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to need some earplugs or something. Okay, right. But uh, great cast. Everyone did a great job. Uh, I honestly did not feel the three hours. I thought, like, I thought everything was pretty vital to the story. Kind of tell, told everything. Mm-hmm. I kind of wanted this to be a series at some point too, because like I wanted to know more and see some other stuff fleshed out. But this was a great film. I loved it. Yeah, I I agree. I think this was, um, you know, I mean, this is. It's a shame because I feel like this movie is going to lose so much money. Because this is a I movie that had come out like yeah. 10, 20 years ago when it could get – where the more people were seeing movies, more people were buying DVDs and Blu-rays and all those things. Uh, it's high production value. There's only one thing I could – like that I caught. It's just like Cillian Murphy's ears are pierced. And it's just like I, I thought I behind his <laughs> ears weren't pierced. But it's like that's the only one thing in the entire movie where you're just like – Damn, Damn, Alex. You got some hyper – Vision, I never noticed. No, that. yeah, it's just like it's the one thing. It's like that's the one thing in this movie, other than Christopher Nolan has, uh, still has. This is better. Not great sound. I, I like this. I like the music in his movies, and I like some of the big sounds. But he plays them when some people are talking sometimes, yeah. and you're like, excuse me. It's a couple of jump scares yeah, for me. Excuse me, what? Like what, what did you just say? Yeah, but I, I love historical nonfiction. It reminds me a lot of the, the historical nonfiction novels that I like. If you guys like this kind of stuff, Eric Larson writes a lot of things like this, where it's kind of two storylines, kind of interweaving between them. Mm. Sometimes it's different things. Big fan of his stuff. Um, I think I 
I gave you a copy of Devil in the White City, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. So it's kind of like that. I mean, this is it's telling a bunch of different stuff about it. And so it's like, this is right up my alley. And, you know, it's not as funny as Barbie. But I think if you're going to see one this weekend, <laughs> I would prefer I would, this one. I would yes. see if you are. If, if you're you can't do the double feature like we did, because honestly, that's like two. Because Barbie's two and a half hours, isn't it? Yeah, just and then, two hours and then long, this yeah. one's three hours. So yeah, I would we much. would push you towards Oppenheimer and then wait till Barbie comes out on uh, you know what is it? Di- well, Disney is not Mattel. J- just v you know VOD or uh, Barbie will be on Max, Amazon or, or something. HBO probably. Yeah, yeah. rent it on Amazon. Um, if you had to choose between the two, you're gonna yeah. come out of this way more. Pensive and 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 thinking about the world and that we live in, um, <laughs> you know. So uh, as opposed to Barbie, so which is kind of throwaway, uh, you, you know, jokes and stuff. Anyways, um, wow, just I loved loved the entire and and what's what's amazing to me is that this is you know uh, based on real events uh, that Oppenheimer became. A vocal advocate uh, against further nuclear prolif- proliferation because of how destructive it is, and and I can't imagine. I mean, I can't imagine now because Christopher Nolan really did the visuals very well of what yeah. it's like to have PTSD trauma uh, in the middle of a celebration. It's like, yeah, we're celebrating the war's end, and that's great because, like, you know. Uh, thousands more Americans and, you know, Japanese won't die on the fields of battle, but at the same time, we've just murdered women, children, civilians, and then also unleashed this force of destruction that could destroy the entire Earth. And I won't spoil anything uh, for you guys. Um, And... Uh, in this section, we might do a spoiler section, but uh, I, I loved the conversation uh, between Albert Einstein and Oppenheimer. Uh, that was poignant, and I didn't expect this sort of uh, sort of political maneuvering and twists there, kind of twist and turns a- a- at the end after such an already great climax in the tension of actually the Trinity test out in the desert. I mean, I was fully satisfied with that, and then I almost got a whole nother movie, like you said, Joe. Like it's like a series. Yeah. Whereas right now you're focusing on this, and then and the th- next episode. Like, yeah. You thought the focal point was going to be the bomb, but honestly, it it wasn't. It, it's like his everything whole else. Life. Yeah. It's a biopic for sure. Yeah. And uh, I didn't expect him to be such a womanizer. He's a very intelligent man. I'm sure he can impress some, some women with his science, Joe. <laughs> science, science of magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a science Anything. of magic. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, uh, what is it? Um, what's that actress's name? Florence, Florence. Pop, how, Pew, Pew, how, uh is in the film. Uh, pretty much, you know, lot. I didn't expect so much nudity. There's some full frontal. Well, not full front. They 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 fold their legs. So I was told frontal. he was getting naked. I was told That's there was full went. frontal. Yeah, it said it from him too. And look, well, we've already seen well, him fully I naked. For, I just wanted to see Florence. How you were looking for Cillian. Okay, well, we've already seen it. him naked. Yeah. I, I I don't remember. You never saw Twenty eight days later. Twenty eight days later. He just let it oh, all. Yeah, twenty eight days later. Yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe that's on the cutting they room won't floor. Men There's hang a, dong anymore. <laughs> There's yeah. a three and a half, three and a half hour film with some more sex. There is sex in the film, um, and and surprisingly, because you think you know scientists and mathematics and theory. And they need love too, man. Ain't gonna be no you know hot and heavy, some titties bouncing and shit. No, they 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 do that as well. It's he a, was a warnizer. It's a biopic, and if he's got several women. There's we learn about some we even learn about other women that, you know, aren't we kind of was in the background and stuff. So uh, very fascinating, massive, massive cast, a t- massive, talented cast, um, you know, and everybody uh, puts in the great work. I even like that scientist who was, you know, pushing the H bomb, you know, it's like oh, everybody man. has their own Tell, personality. Teller, Teller, tell tell I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody has their own personalities and the scientists, you know, kind of getting on each other's nerves. I will not work for that man, you know, kind of thing. Well, yeah, you put them all in the same room. You can't leave this area. So you motherfuckers, this is for the fate of of the world. Yes. And then the reservations, I can't work on the bomb because I don't believe in killing people. 
And it's like, yeah, but if we don't have the bomb, guess who who will have the bomb? The Nazis. And they'll use that motherfucking bomb if it, if it, to, in order to win their war. And Hitler won't think twice about it. He's already firing off the V2 rockets. And so I loved the uh, juxtaposition, um, or, or rather uh, a visual device where some soldiers will kind of talk about uh, one soldier in particular who kind of fired off and helped uh, facilitate an investigation against Oppenheimer uh, because he has personal trauma uh, being a pilot and seeing V2 rockets, you know, going over and the destructiveness of that. And he's imagining, well, what happens if we put these nuclear warheads on these V2 rockets? I got to make sure that, yeah. you know, all all these people involved in this project. So he thinks he's doing the right thing. Everything's, everybody thinks they're doing the right thing. But when they bring that up, you know, and he's talking to Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer places himself in in that kind yeah. of situation. So you get a visual shot of him in the bomber, seeing like all those like visual yes. cues um, help the viewer kind of you know uh, further experience the story from a lot of angles and kind of get in Oppenheimer's mind uh, and mindset. Really well done, especially you know. I've, uh, Let's see, 2023. I don't know. Was this film done during the COVID? Because, like, you know, usually that can that can lead to some problems. But I, I didn't pick up it on any of it. Everything was well executed, tight. Um, as you said, you didn't feel it was three hours. No. Did y'all feel like it was too long or anything? Like, like I said, that? I want a series of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I you mean, want more. Right? Yeah, it's kind of it reminds me a lot of like The Irishman, where like that yeah, movie. Yeah. That was too long. There's a mind. solid movie in there, and then there's this point where it's like there's a little bit of drag because we hit this climax, and you're like, wait a minute, you're gonna have to win, re win me over because we're watching pretty much a second movie, like a sequel to the first. Yeah. But uh, I wasn't like itching to get out of there. I didn't check the time or anything like mm. that. Yeah, de definitely um, an engaging watch, a thriller, so to speak, it, it, you know, but also a historical real life, uh, you know, thing that that's happening. So yet another, uh, feather in, uh, Nolan crown, uh, no, uh, Christopher Nolan's crown here. Um, yeah, cause, uh, what, the last one, Tenet, Tenet, yeah. yeah, I, I started it. Ten like, uh, that requires it multiple viewings <laughs> and I never got around to the third viewing. Uh, I want to see Oppenheimer again, just yeah. just to, because um, there's a lot of character names, there's a lot of people involved in this, and I I think it would be worth a watch again. Uh, whereas Barbie, okay. I'm done with it. You know this this yeah, I would want to watch again. It, I might yeah. even want to, you know, buy a, a Blu-ray and you know keep it for you know to show friends and you know historical sake and what 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 happened. People, especially people that aren't familiar with the history behind. The Trinity Test, the Manhattan Project, and Oppenheimer himself. This is just fantastic. So let's go with final verdicts. Um, I actually really loved it. I'm going to go with a 10. Hey, hey. Great. Okay. It is a great story. Uh, great acting. The editing was great. It, I don't. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty much perfect. And I, everyone, I honestly didn't feel like any of these actors phoned it in. Nope. They all put out an amazing performance and, and you're also kind of limited by history you can't be like oh, and then strauss did this and you know and then it, no we have to somewhat stay within the bounds and considering that you're staying within the bounds i think they did i am also going with a 10 what about you Alex? yeah um, i i really like it i, I definitely think they soup this up because they oh, fuck Okay, sorry. Contractors called. Uh, Alex, uh, what, what do you think? Yeah, I, I don't have... There's not a lot of faults here. Like, I didn't feel bored by the, mm. the runtime. I, I really like historical nonfiction. Now, I do think that they definitely soup up historical nonfiction. They try to make things a little yeah. bit more exciting. They really press <laughs> who's working and not working together well because they've got to do something with it because... Um, but, you know, I I really enjoyed it. So if, if we're... It's got to be like a ten, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see any inherent flaws in it. Now, granted, you know, this is, uh, you know, ten out of ten is not a perfect film. Don't think that our ten out of tens are perfect. What it means is, it's just a legendary film, film that I have no problems watching again. I understand its significance. I think that it's a great example. Uh, legendary means a good example within the genre, and this is a great example of a historical slash biopic kind of thing. 
So I, I hope uh, I hope Napoleon and and these kinds <sighs> of yeah I would encourage you guys to watch this it. again and again because I want to see more films like this. Yeah. So we hope it does well at the theater. I obviously no numbers yet because this is this is just coming out. I I know it's Barbie's going doing it's well going up against Barbie. So saw a lot of pink. <laughs> More pink today. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> our vote is for Oppenheimer. Guys, thank you all very much uh, for watching. Uh, let's do, I guess, do we, I mean, it's not really, it's not really no. a, a historic, you know, kind of a spoiler section. But for those of you who have already seen it, maybe want to hear us talk about it a little bit, we'll go into the spoiler section just for fun. All right, guys. Thank you so much, and we'll see you there. Hey, guys, welcome to the spoiler section. So, Man, that Strauss, that motherfucker. It's, it's, it's great, great political maneuverings here and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. I, I was awesome to see that um, the scientific community kind of rally around one of their own in, in the last minute ditch defense to uh, prevent, uh, you know, Oppenheimer from having his name uh, kind of uh, say, oh, he's a communist agent. It's like, motherfucker, this is the... Uh, one of the most loyal people the United States and uh, basically allowed us to to build this thing quicker and and uh, with necess with need um, so I thought that was well executed Strauss uh, you know Robert Downey Jr very self-important character and he's like god damn it man motherfucker embarrassed me yeah, at a goddamn meeting so we assume, and I'm gonna get yeah, that motherfucker that. back kind of thing that polit that Washington political backstabbing is is here in full effect and he pulls some very dastardly deeds this uh, sort of um behind closed doors uh, investigation that's not court proceedings it's a fucking clown court and they are able to pull the biggest bullshit ever and and really paint him. I, I love the moment. I love the complex relationship between Oppenheimer and his wife, because uh, you know, and and it's very they messy. lay it all bare. They they are not good parents. <laughs> you know, they essentially give up their kid because yeah. he's just screaming all the time, and she's, she's, she's not a good alcoholic. mother. She's a shitty mother, and she's an alcoholic. But hey, man, when the fucking shit hit the fan, and she she she's called in. And this lawyer's like, I'm going to fuck her up, and I'm, is she going to be easy prey? Boom, that's when she puts in her work, yeah. and I She's love that scene. She's also one of the scientists as well, right? I no. think so. Mm -mm. No? Kitty? No. no. I don't she was, she was married to a different scientist. Oh, okay. they, Yeah, their whole relationship yeah. is based on people cheating on each other. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yep, uh, and, uh, and he does a lot of that. Uh, so obviously there's the uh, a, a woman that he meets uh, who is a part of the Communist Party at the time. You know, they were for workers' rights. And, and then, you know, there's two different Communist parties, Communist idea. Oh, we're going to, you know, be loyal to uh, the Soviet Union. And the other one is like, hey, we just want workers' rights and, and, and try to get. And so then they take that broad brush and paint everybody as traitors to the United States. And they were trying to do that to Oppenheimer because of his association uh, with her. But he's weak. He got a weakness for her. Whenever she calls and she get naked, he gonna go over there and get naked. And and then the FBI is following him, and and that gets him in trouble. Um, and she kind of has a sad end to her story. Um, they did a visual thing there where yeah, it's like I think that's unsure. his mind, Oppenheimer, where it's like, oh shit, that maybe an agent fucking kill her. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the military people following me or. Is it a suicide because he's like, I can't come back and see you anymore. You know, this can't be a thing. I have a wife and children, mm -hmm. and then her life is That's kind had of turmoil. left open. So I left open, yeah. Um, I'm sure you could do your, your own research there. But, um, yeah, just fucking fantastic. So you had that Strauss kind of uh, in the third act. Uh, the, his, his plans come to fruition. Once we've got the bomb... Um, I'm going to use you since you embarrassed me in order to further my political career and, and go for a power grab. Ultimately, it kind of works, you know, even but not as effectively as he wanted because he himself is thrown under the bus. Uh, and because the scientists were able to, you know, call him out effectively and say this is just an assassination job on, on his character. Um 
And that's just one aspect of the film. You know what I mean? Yeah. You guys bring up. Any parts you want to talk about, Alex? Just, uh, I would say, like, after they're done with the bomb, like, like, all right, well, we have no use for you. You find out more stuff about the scientists that get uh, excommunicated. Uh, some guys working on the railroads. It's like, all right, we'll, we'll yeah. use you up. And well, the, so, the, so the guy on the railroad was a communist, and he was the guy who was trying to rally all the people together yeah. at the school. So, I mean, they, it kind of really goes into depth about the, you know, one of the many shit stains on American history is McCarthyism and the Big Red Scare and how mm -hmm. they. I mean, politically motivated people were using their ambition to destroy the lives of all sorts of people, and he was yeah. no, I mean, and so there was a lot of people involved in that. So it was kind of interesting to see, um, you know, the, them kind of go into that side of American history because some places here don't like to teach history that doesn't make us look good. Yes. And, yeah, um, but uh, to be fair, there were fucking traitors. There were people who will advance their own uh, monetary gain and sell secrets to the Russians. There were legitimate American spies who were traitors to their country, especially when you're working on something as sensitive as that. Oh, you yeah. bet your ass the fucking Russians are going to be like, All right, we want to know what you know. Yeah. You know, um, and so there were I'm, I'm sure a lot of that happened. But then, of course, you know, with the one. Everybody takes it to the extreme and people use it for their own games and then Yeah, it was, yeah. it was the second witch hunt that we had in, in the con. Because I, I feel by the end of this film, I'm like, there was not enough security at the... Uh, what is the La Las uh, Las Alamos? What's the name of the um, facility? Los Alamo Alamos Al Alamos. Uh, not enough security, so I do think that my, you know the Russians. Now, obviously, you know the Soviet Union had their own scientists, their own very smart people, so they could probably get it done, but slower. But there's no doubt some some you know they're they're out there and actively seeking. Yeah. Um, yeah, just really, really cool um, from a lot of different angles. Uh, you you see Oppenheimer's respect for the German scientists and, uh, and you know, them grilling him on it and stuff like that. And then while we never met again, we were on that same kind of race against each other yeah. kind of thing. Um, and it's wild to think about, like, you know, if something would have went wrong here, with Oppenheimer, if they've chose somebody else besides Oppenheimer and there was more government intervention, if Matt Damon's character, uh, General Groves, uh, had more interference and, you know, how could things have gone? Would it have been a delay? The verse, and then would, you know, the Germans, well, the Germans by then, you know, were losing World War II, so, you know, but it's just fascinating to think about. Well, all some the random businessman gave us an entire cargo ship full of uranium we didn't have any right and so like it just happened to be that some guys like i hear you're looking for some here you go <laughs> and then it's like, like so there's so much stuff and i'm i'm still i'm curious because there's gonna be a lot of history nuts they're gonna be mad about this movie and like i'm sure there like, are like, inaccuracies I did, yeah well I, or just things are just wildly left apart like you remember in dunkirk when there's like two airplanes in one of the largest uh, aerial <laughs> battles of all time and he only showed like 40 ships and when there was thousands and and it's just like there's limitations to movies sometimes but yeah. i'm curious to see like what the the people who are like this is my thing you know what what their problem with it is yeah i would love to watch the videos with an open mind and it makes me curious about it um yeah so uh man just fantastic i think that you should go out and see it um yes. Any anything else? So we got the Strauss. We got okay. So what what uh, the Albert Einstein conversation? Uh, you know the Strauss thinks he's so self important. He thinks these motherfuckers were talking about me. I want to know what he said because Albert just he didn't even acknowledge me. So he must have said something about me. And and uh, the guy uh, Han Solo goes, you know, maybe they were talking about something more important than you. And they was right because. Yep. Albert was basically saying, look, look what happened to me. And, uh, you know, you're going to essentially become, um, I don't know what to call it, a, a pariah. You're going to become a, uh, a figure that's going to have to deal with this. You are kind of like the next me kind of thing where um, you'll have to deal. And you'll be remembered as the father of the atomic bomb. 
And at one point, he even asks Albert for his help on a calculation. And Albert gives him good advice. But he's like, can you do these calculations? And he's like, this is your, here, these are your, you, for you to handle. Um, and I really like that. And ultimately, he basically said, you know, when we talked about those calculations, potentially doing a chain reaction, and that's kind of how that film ends. And he goes, I think we set off the chain reaction. So while when they pressed the button, there was like a 0.0023% chance it would have caused a chain reaction in the entire Straight atmosphere out. from... And it's so funny to think about this this the small bomb that they... This like this chance. is This is a tiny... Little boy and fat man were fucking... Or fat man, fat boy... No, yeah. It were small atomic bombs compared to what we have now, right? And they it's were scary. worried that they were going to ignite scary. the... It is scary. Yeah. That they were going hey, to... A lot of them are missing, world. by the way. Just right. to make sure yes. if you feel, yeah, feel better. No, I, a lot I, of them are missing. Yeah. Mm. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> when they did ultimately push the button, it didn't blow the whole world up. But I liked at the end where he said, ultimately, that chain reaction did start. It's just not in that chain reaction. It's we think of it. The world. And then they show I visuals of current day intercontinental ballistic missiles. They even have the visuals, this sort of nightmare that he sees where... Um, all of the rockets have been launched from the nuclear silos. And then he even goes back to when he put himself in the pilot shoes mm -hmm. and saw a V-2 rocket. The rest of them are flying like there's 15 V-2 rockets with intercontinental ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads. Wow. Just, um, you know. It's a lot. A great, a great yeah. way to end the film and, and keep people thinking. And I, I, I really hope the Russians watch this. I mean, it's going to piss them off because they're like, ah, fucking Americans, you know, hating on communism and all this other stuff. Uh, but it's important because, you know, they have just as much power to destroy the fucking world as we do if uh, somebody fucks it up and presses a button or gets too big of a hot head. Well, they've got Tsar Bomba, and we need to worry about that. Yeah. That's And then also a bunch of missing nu nuclear missiles. Yeah, those are little it's ones. Tsar Bomba is... That's, yeah. that's the big one. La Bamba? Tsar Bomba. Oh, La Bamba Zarba. is missing now, yeah. so we got to worry about No, we know where La Bamba is. <laughs> um, okay. Well... I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. It's uh, hard to have spoilers for something that happened. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're yeah, just yeah, basically yeah. talking about you the, know the, the, film, the yeah. ramifications uh, of that, and then uh, they do show uh, you know Oppenheimer growing old and getting awards, and this is kind of what Albert Einstein predicted. Like they will, they will. Um, <laughs> They're doing you know, it for door, themselves. They're not doing for you. it for it, all this pageantry. is not about you. It's for them. Oh, I got to talk about this. Gary Oldman, man, he's a great fucking yes. actor. <laughs> I think he's Harry S. Truman. I think he's yeah. a motherfucker. Get this crab baby out of my Unrecognizable. <laughs> he's like, you know, uh, he's like, yeah, motherfucker, you built the bomb. I dropped it. Yeah. Okay, this is ain't about you. This is about me. They don't remember me. They don't remember me. And and he's like, get this crab baby out of here who basically, <laughs> and I, I don't know if that was really Harry S. Truman's attitude he certainly didn't say that in front well i don't know maybe he but that's just like they take the liberties but for the movie yeah goes. but it's for like, the oh, movie step. it, it yeah. condenses what the general sentiment yeah. between these two or that dynamic was like and mm. I, I believe it uh in, in that sense so yeah great another a great performance from gary oldman again where he's unrecognizable he is a uh, harry s truman in that yeah everything uh, works out pretty well and uh, I think that's it. I'll see yep. you guys. Go out and see the film, definitely. I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, everybody.